Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of Chettinad in Tamil Nadu. Now for those of you who don't know, Chettinad is not really a place in Tamil Nadu. What I mean by that is if you google for example the driving distance from Bangalore to Chettinad, you are not going to get a clear answer. That's because Chettinad is not really a name for a particular village or town. It is a name given to a group of villages in Tamil Nadu. First, let's do a quick recap of who the Chettiars are and how Chettinad came into being. The Chettiars were bankers and traders and they sailed with the Indian and British fleets to South and Southeast Asia during the colonial era. Now, because of their financial prowess and business acumen, they became exceedingly wealthy traders and businessmen wherever in the world they were sent. Now, what they did with all this wealth is that they sent it all back to Tamil Nadu they came back and founded 96 villages in the interiors of arid Tamil Nadu. And in these 96 villages, they built huge fort-like mansions and filled it with all the beautiful things that they found from across the world that they traveled to. So it is these 96 villages that were formed after the Chettiars amassed their wealth abroad that came to be known as Chettinad. The Chettiars transformed this arid part of Tamil Nadu with their beautiful mansions, school systems and stunning temples. Now after the Second World War, when most of South and Southeast Asia gained independence from its colonial powers, the Chettiars had to leave their vast businesses that they had built over all these decades and they had to come back to Chettinad. When they came back to Chettinad, they realized that there were no business prospects really in uh, Chettinad and the land was arid, making agriculture not extremely viable either. So what they did to survive was to sell all the beautiful things in their homes that they brought in from abroad over the years. Some families even had to dismantle their homes to make ends meet. So what was initially 96 Chettiar villages came down to just 73 villages which are known as Chettinad today. The number one thing you must do in Chettinad is to visit all the beautiful mansions. The mansions in their heyday was built to accommodate large joint families of about 6 to 14 families in one mansion depending on the size of it. So you can imagine how big these mansions actually were. Their homes were made with the best of materials and decor from around the world. Chandeliers from Belgium and Italy, wall tiles from Japan, Italian marble, Burma teak pillars, Belgian stained glass windows and steel from England. Most Chettiars have left Chettinad to sink their roots around the country and the world and their homes are left under the supervision of caretakers. The Chettiars are very keen on reviving their hometown to its former glory and they want to encourage tourism to the area. To enable this, all the homes that are not occupied presently are left open during daytime for tourists to visit and learn more about their glorious past. One thing to note is that the caretakers expect a tip of around 100 rupees per head for allowing you in. At one house that I visited, the caretakers were complaining of their low pay, so the tips they get from visitors is their way of earning a supplemental income. It is common for caretakers to try to get you to visit their homes when they see you strolling along the streets or visiting neighbouring homes. In the village of Karekudi, the notable houses are the MSMM house, which is a beautiful home that is owned by the Mayapan family and guests at the Bangla Hotel is allowed access to it. So I stayed at the Bangla and uh, that's why I had access to the MSMM house. It's a beautiful heritage home. Uh, if you are staying at the Bangla, you should definitely visit it. Else, you can check if you are allowed access to the MSMM house by maybe having a meal at the Bangla. The meals at the Bangla are to die for, so you should definitely keep that in mind and maybe visit the Bangla for a meal at least. If the other notable house in the Karekudi area is the Airam Journal Veda, which means the house with a thousand windows. This house, though, isn't open to visitors as it is occupied at the moment. But you can definitely have a look at it from the outside. Karnadikatan is where I spent most of my time exploring the homes because there are a lot of homes 
in Kanarikata and that's open to visitors and like I mentioned earlier uh, all the homes here though not occupied are under the supervision of caretakers and during the day it's open for people to come and have a look so uh, don't be surprised if you're walking around and people ask you to just come and have a look at their uh, home it's probably for the little bit of tip that they will get from the number of people that enter the house so the notable houses in Kanadukatan that you should visit are the VVR house, Chetanad Mansion which is now a heritage hotel so you can definitely book a stay there or even have a meal there, their food is really good as well. Lakshmi Villas which is renovated and is a beautiful hotel now as well and the Chetanad Palace. This is not open to visitors but it is beautiful even from the outside. The Chetanad Palace was open to visitors earlier but I think it is because of a family uh, issue or a family squabble for the property that it's not open at the moment for visitors. That was the update I got from the people uh, in Chetanad at the time. I'm not sure if it's all been resolved and now you can visit it. But definitely check with the people at your hotel or at Kanadukatan to see if the Chetanad Palace is open for visitors again and visit it if it's possible. In the village of Atangudi, the most notable house that you should visit is the Periya Veda. The other thing you should do when you're in Atangudi is to visit the Atangudi Tile Factory. The beautiful Atanguri tiles are used extensively in the homes of Chetanad and now all over India. I noticed that the Bangalore Palace features some colourful tiles from Chetanad as well. Artisans are available at the factory daily to demonstrate the making of these intricately designed tiles. They even let you join in the process. They expect a tip of around 100 rupees after the demonstration, so come ready with some change. You can buy the Atamudi tiles and get them shipped home but keep in mind that each tile weighs around 1.5 kilograms so they are not meant to be used on the wall, they are meant to be used only as flow tiles. They cost Rs 50 each but when ordering in bulk I think you can negotiate it down to Rs 40. So if you're planning on redesigning your home and you want Chetanad tiles in your home this is the place to come. The next thing you should do when you're in Chetanad is to visit a Chetanad Sari weaver. The typical Chetanad Saris use bright colors like red, yellow, orange and green in their signature checked or striped designs. The Sri Mahalakshmi Handloom Weaving Center in Kanadukatan is open for visitors to view the weaving process of their beautiful saris. They have a selection of hand-woven silk and cotton saris, ready-made bed sheets, cushion covers and tunics for sale. Do keep in mind that when you are buying directly from the weavers here in Kanadukata and that you are positively impacting the local community, you are supporting the weavers and their livelihood. So don't forget to buy a sari or a tunic or whatever it is that you can from the weavers here. I did, I bought saris uh, to take home for myself and for my family. So I urge you to do the same as well. When you are in Chetanad, you have to visit the nine clan temples founded by the Chetiars in their heyday. That is when the Chetiars founded the 96 villages of Chetanad, they set up nine clan temples. A Chetia, regardless of wherever in the world he is born, bears allegiance to one of these nine clan temples and they make it a point to come back for the festivals of their clan temple. So it is an important part of the Chetia culture to take part in their clan temples festivals. So during the festivals of the temples, you will see Chetias from around the world come together and it will be like it was in their heyday. Now each temple is a testament to the wealth of the Chetiyars in their heyday because each of these temples is built with beautiful stone carvings and wood carvings and things that are imported from around the world. For example, the wood used in most of these temples would be Burma teak like it is in most of their mansions as well. Now each clan temple is a testament to the wealth of the Chetiyars in their heyday. Because each of these temples have beautiful stone and wood carvings that depict scenes from the sacred texts. 
Visit as many of the clan temples as you can and you will get a better understanding of the rich culture and heritage of the Chettiyas. What I would highly recommend is to get to Chettinad during one of these temple festivals because that's the time you will see Chettinad at its best. Because like I mentioned earlier, the Chettiyas love their temple festivals and their festivals are so colourful, it is the best time to see Chettinad, I feel. Now the other points of interest in the Chettinad area are the Thirumayam Fort which was built in 1687. It grants beautiful views of the villages of Chettinad. And the other one is the INR Horse Temple in Kannadukathan village of Chettinad. It's known for its terracotta horses. It's one place that you should definitely see if you have the time. Now how to get there? Karekodi is well connected by buses from Madurai and Trichy. Madurai and Trichy are also the closest airports. It's about 100 kilometers from the Chettinad or Karekodi village. You can also think of hiring a cab from either Trichy or Madurai. There are also overnight trains from Chennai to Karekodi if that's an option for you as well. The best time to visit Chettinad is October to March because after that it gets really hot. Uh, I was there when it was quite hot. So I would highly recommend you go between October to March because the weather is fairly pleasant. Uh, but mind you, it will be hot, but it's going to be a lot more pleasant than going at any other time of the year. And you won't feel like you're having a heat stroke. Now I've written a detailed article about the best food in Chettinad and where to get it. I'm going to put the link for that article in the description of this video. So do check it out if you're planning a trip to Chettinad anytime soon. I'm also going to make a detailed video on the shopping in Chettinad. Because I loved shopping in Chettinad and I'm sure anyone who has an eye for antiques and saris will love Chettinad as well. So uh, keep an eye out for that video. It's coming out really soon. I hope you liked my virtual tour of Chetanad. If you did not know anything about Chetanad up until now, I hope I've helped you understand about the culture and traditions of Chetanad and what you can expect when you get there. If you like this video, as always, let me remind you to share this with your friends, switch on your notifications so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always, happy travels to all of you.